Hi friends, Cole here. Welcome to midweek message number 3,426,385. Or maybe it just seems like that. I guess it's only been six months, actually. Seems longer, doesn't it? At least it does for me. How about you? How are you feeling this week as we hit the six-month mark since we had our last in-person worship service at Selkirk United Church on McLean Avenue? Speaking of the six-month mark, I read something interesting the other day about the six-month mark of any traumatic event. It was written by Dr. Aisha Ahmad, an associate professor in political science at the University of Toronto, who has done work in the area of conflict dynamics in the midst of very high conflict areas all over the world, from Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Lebanon to Somalia and Kenya. Dr. Ahmad says, the six month mark in any sustained crisis is always difficult. We have all adjusted to this new normal, but might now feel like we're running out of steam. Yet at best, we are only a third of the way through this marathon. How can we keep going? First, she says, in my experience, this is a very normal time to struggle or slump. I always hit a wall six months into a tough assignment in a disaster zone. The desire to get away or make it stop is intense. I've done this many times, and at six months, it's like clockwork. This time, our crisis is global and there is nowhere to run. That's okay. I've had to power through that six-month hump before, and there is life on the other side. Right now, it feels like we are looking ahead at, at a long, dark, wintry tunnel. But it's not going to be like that. Rather, this is our next major adaptation phase. We've already relearned how to do groceries, host meetings, and even teach classes. And we have found new ways to be happy and have fun. But as the days get shorter and colder, We need to be ready to innovate again. This is my first pandemic, she says, but not my first six-month wall. So what can I share to help you? First, the wall is real and normal. And frankly, it's not productive to try to ram your head through it. It will break naturally in about four to six weeks if you ride it out. Of course, there are things we have to do. Work, teach, cook, exercise but just don't expect to be sparklingly happy or wildly creative in the middle of your wall, of your wall. Right now, if you can meet your obligations and be kind to your loved ones, you get an A+. Also, don't be afraid that your happiness and creativity are gone for the rest of this marathon. Not true. I assure you that it will soon break and you will hit a new stride. But today, roll with it. Clear away less challenging projects, read a novel, download that meditation app. Frankly, even though we cannot physically leave this disaster zone, try to give yourself a mental or figurative shore leave. Short mental escapes can offer respite and distance from the everyday struggle. Take more mental leave until you clear the wall. In my experience, this six-month wall both arrives and dissipates like clockwork, so I don't fight it anymore. I don't beat myself up over it. I just know that it will happen and trust that the dip will pass. In the meantime, I try to support my mental and emotional health. Take heart. We have navigated a harrowing global disaster for six months with resourcefulness and courage. We have already found new ways to live, love, and be happy under these rough conditions. A miracle and a marvel. This is hard proof that we have what it takes to keep going. So dear friends, do not despair of the six month wall. It's not permanent, nor will it define you in this period of adversity. Trust that the magic that helped you through the first phase is still there. Take a breath and a pause. You'll be on the other side in no time. That's from Dr. Ahmad, Dr. Aisha Ahmad. Lots of food for thought there for all of us. I hope you can hear the hope in her words, no matter how you're feeling at this time in this strange pandemic journey that we've all been on together, but each of us in our own unique ways. 
This journey can have us feeling all sorts of things these days, some very difficult feelings, worries, stress. Hopefully there are some positive and hopeful feelings mixed in there too. Melody Hag Long, Presbyterian minister serving a congregation in Connecticut, wrote about some of her feelings recently. She asks a lot of questions in her writing, but I think questions are fine right now. We're all asking them. And sometimes there's strength in numbers when we know that others are asking the same ones that we are. We don't necessarily need all the answers because sometimes there just aren't any, at least not yet. So we live with the questions. Here's what Reverend Long had to say. First, she asks, what is really important? I think that is one of those questions bubbling up through the morass of these days. Spending time alone and away from frantic activity becomes a moment to reconnect with family, ourselves, God. We've learned that perhaps it is not that vital to have hair done every month. Maybe we really don't need to shop that much. There are also existential questions that arise. What is my role and call in these days? What do I want my life legacy to be? Where is God? For people of faith, it is at just such a time we can delve into our faith. Maybe faith was more a Sunday morning occurrence than a way of life. Or this season awakens within us a surprising hunger for God. What is my faith? How does it live now? Good questions. She ends with this prayer. I am frantic, O oh God, trying to find an anchor, trying to hold on, trying to figure out how to live in this world. Darkness, anger, hatred, so much noise threaten to unravel my soul. Then I pause to breathe, to listen, to wait, and to discover the joy of you here all along. Amen. Those were words and a prayer from Reverend Melody Hag Long from Connecticut. God has been here all along for us and for all, and that will remain true forever. I hope each of you continue to feel that presence, both in the spiritual sense of our Creator God's presence surrounding you and sustaining you, but also in the practical sense of God's people surrounding you and sustaining you. God's people being the hands and feet and heart of God, putting those theological notions into action in tangible ways. I hope you feel the care and compassion that others have for each of you, whether it be family members, friends, neighbors, your church family, or me. You're not alone. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Before I end this midweek message, uh, just one announcement that I'd like to make. Uh, we're talking about Thanksgiving coming up in just three Sundays from now, and we're going to try to have something a little different for Thanksgiving. We can't decorate the sanctuary as we as we usually do. Well, I guess we could, but no one would be there to see it. So we're going to try to replace that with some, hopefully some beautiful pictures sent in from all of you. And it can be what you want, something related to Thanksgiving, maybe a centerpiece, maybe uh, some beautiful pictures of nature around your yard or your area. Uh, who knows what it might be for each of you, but something that you think uh, relates the, the word Thanksgiving, the idea of Thanksgiving. We'll give you a little bit more information about that uh, in the next couple of Sundays during announcement time, but I just want to get you thinking about that uh, as we get closer to Thanksgiving time. I hope you all have a good week, and I hope to see you soon one way or another. Take care, friends, and God be with you.